How's it going everybody? This is Mr. Morales. Today I'm going to show you the for next statement. So uh, unlike the do loop statement which can be used to code both pretest and post test loops, the for next statement can be used to code only a specific type of pretest loop which is called a counter controlled loop. Um, what a counter control loop is, is it's a loop whose processing is controlled by a counter. So you're basically going to use a counter control loop when you want the computer to process the loop instructions a precise number of times. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So I have this little pro uh, program that I created. Now, um, as you can see for my purpose, the, the, the purpose of this application will display the amount of a company's projected sales for each of four years using a 3% growth rate per year and beginning with the year 2017. So projected sales for four years beginning in 2017 and using a 3% growth rate. So I have the specific amount of times that I want the loop to be uh, generated and that's four. Now let's type in a sales amount just for example purposes we'll put a thousand. So you can see once I calculate it you'll see the amounts so for 2017, I'm getting a 30% increase of 1,000. That's 1,030. That's easy math that you can do. As you, and as you can see, for the rest of the years, I'm using the previous amount and giving 30% increase of each of those amounts. <clears throat> so how did I do this? Let's take a look at the code. So let's focus on the let's focus on the calculate button calculate buttons click event as you can see I have several uh, variable declaration statements um, I have I'm, I'm using the try parse method but the meat of the program is the for next loop which is what I want to talk to you about just for simplicity purposes and just to show you I added this line of code we, I'm, I'm basically preserving the double um, the the value of double amount. So I I kind of wanted to leave this alone. You can do this. You don't have to. Um, if you do it my way, you're going to need to have this. If you want to change it and do it a different way, you, there's ways that you don't have to add this line of code. So I'm using uh, the value of double amount, and I'm saving it to a new variable called double new amount. <coughs> So let's take a look at our for next loop. Let's start with the keyword for. Then we go, we're basically establishing a new variable here called int year. And I'm giving it a variable a data type of integer. And I'm initializing that variable and the starting value, I should say, is 2017. The end value is 2020. So you know that it's gonna this this code or this for next loop will run four times. And we have another keyword here too. So basically it's going from 2017 to 2020. Let's take a look, a look let's take a look at the next line here. This is the math part, okay? This is where we do our 30% increase. So basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at this double new amount variable, which <clears throat> if you remember, it's the amount that the user types in. And what I'm doing with that amount is I'm multiplying times uh, 3%, okay? And then I'm adding it back to the double new amount and then I'm assigning that result, that new value, back to the double new amount variable. Okay. Next line of code. I always like starting at the right side of the equal sign. So I'm ha I have a variable called str results, str results. What is str results? Well, str results. If we take a look at our um, variable declaration statements str results is basically just a string variable and it starts off by being empty okay so here if we have our we start off with our str results 
and the first time you run this it's going to be empty and that's okay because the next time you run it you want to make sure that the previous results are there okay <clears throat> then I'm using uh, I'm appending whenever you append a string you use the and so I'm, I'm appending I'm basically adding more to the string and next item that I'm a adding is the int year so the first time you run this int year is 2017 next time you run it is 2018 and so on and so forth I'm appending and notice this is a, this is a a string here um, I just have some space a dash and another space that's just to separate the year from the amount and notice it's in quotation marks okay that's how we um, show that it's a string we're also appending a double new amount so this is our this is our calculation that we did um, above in the previous line of code so double new amount we're converting it to a string and we are applying the currency style to it. Zero two means it's uh, two decimal places. We're adding the last item on this uh, code line of code is we are adding a new line. Um, we're basically going to be jumping to the next line the next time the loop occurs. So we use control car charge dot new line. Finally, what ends our four next loop is the keyword next and our variable in year so basically we're saying go to the next year the next one uh, is 2018 and it will complete the loop until it goes up to 2020 at the end is our output and we're basically just outputting the stir results I forgot to mention that our everything from this line will be assigned to the stir results variable which is a string which we output at the end so hopefully you understand this um, for next loop um, just as a uh, as extra information that I want to tell you 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 can use some of this you can in order to solve this problem you can use a do while loop or you can use a for next loop you know you're going to figure out what you prefer now a for next loop is be is more compact and you use a for next loop when you know um, how many times you're going to uh, run that that some uh, piece of code okay some instructions you know the exact amount of time times you want it to run so this is a perfect example of using a for next loop of why you would use a for next loop remember it's just more compact it looks a little bit neater than doing a do while loop but you can also solve this problem doing a do while loop uh, one last thing is when you do, do loops it's good to experiment you know take things out add things in um, if you if you, by accident you create a, a a loop that a never ending loop well you're gonna have to you learn something you're gonna have to um, debug and uh, stop the program debug or press control delete stop the program okay and then go back to the code and fix it so that's all I have for you guys today the for next loop um, hopefully you learned something new today about loops and we'll see you in the next video